Cooperative Extension Service. I'm with Sam McKenzie in Monroe, Oklahoma, looking at his dead hog disposal unit. It's a biovator. Can you tell me how long you've been using this and exactly what does it do? Uh, this is, I've had this since May of this year. Uh, so I've had it for about four months now and it, uh, we put all our, our waste in it, mix it with uh, Your waste or your dead? Well, my, de my dead and afterbirth and, and uh, it, it processes and come out to a finished product at the, at the other end. Is it more or less a composter? Basically a mechanical composter. Why did you, uh, what were you doing before you started uh, composting? We were using incinerator. We had been using incinerator about the past 10 years and, uh, and uh, it was just time to buy something new or get something different. So you decided that this is much easier than incineration then? Oh, the, it really the, the is. Dead hogs. It really is. It's real, really easy to do. So it looks like a big silver milk tank. What actually is going on in there? Well, it's got paddles on the inside and it rotates uh, one full turn. I have it set for doing it six times a day. And uh, when you put the stuff in at one end, it mixes together and, and turns and aerates and uh, works its way down. And about anywhere from nine to 14 days later, whatever you put in, the loading end will come out as a finished product in this end. Okay, so it's like a big ro or a, a narrow rotating drum composter. Yes. So this is the, the product as it comes out of the composter. I still see we have some bones here though. Yeah, bones are quite a bit denser. It takes a little bit longer to, for them to break down. And so uh, they'll fall out the end of this uh, bone screener, which we just put on, which is very beneficial because what you see is the fines will fall in that first barrel right there. Uh, the little bit bigger stuff will fall here and the, the bigger bones will fall in these. And these two we actually put back in and let them run through again. And, but this first uh, barrel here is the finished project and this is what we'll take and put in flower beds or the garden or around trees and, and uh, it's, uh, it's ready to go as you can see. How many times does it take the bones? Do you send it back two or three times? Or? Yeah, about, about three times. They said the big bones can take up to about two months to actually break completely down. So how long does it take for a, a load of material to move through the composter? Uh, about anywhere from eight to 14 days, 15 days. So maybe three or four runs through, the yeah. bones just disappear, you yep. don't see them anymore? Yep, it'll hmm. all be that finished fine compost there. Well, let's see how you load this thing. All righty, let's come right up here. This is the business end, so to speak, where I had to open it up for us. All righty. So this is, this is a hog that's been in there about how long? When's the last time you loaded it? Uh, well, I, I load a little bit every day. I usually have about a five gallon bucket full each day when a five gallon bucket weighs about 50 pounds usually. And uh, so this here has probably been in here all the last four or five days. It's a lot moisture on, on this end than it is in the discharge end. About what do you try to keep the moisture content as you're loading? The, the digester. Well, you just want it to be look good and wet down in this area, and that's what uh, the afterbirth and stuff keeps this area wet, and it just it gets drier as it goes toward the other end, and uh, and then you've seen the finished product down there how uh -huh. it's how it looks dry, but still feels a little moist. So you have a pretty simple recipe. You just have your dead hogs and your afterbirth, and you add a little of the wood shavings, and that's it. That's that's it. About what ratio, or do you lay them in there and and put shavings on top? How do you load it? I, I'll uh, put down some fresh shavings and bed it out in the bottom two or three inches and then I'll put uh, the afterbirth stuff on top of it and then put some more fresh shavings or even add the, uh, the products down here that, at the end that we're going to bring back and cover it all up and try to put four or five, six inches on top of it. Of it and, uh, so when you're recycling stuff out, you're actually bringing some of the bacteria and the fungus and whatnot to kind of uh, yeah. inoculate your material to get it started Mixing again. Mixing it back through, yep. About what temperature is this going to run at? Oh, it, it varies between 100 and 130 degrees, uh, you know, being a little a little hotter down here and cooler as it gets down toward the other end. You can also watch the temperature and, and it'll tell you your moisture content. If it gets too wet, it actually will cool down your temperature gauge. And so you can tell by temperature how much uh, more dry material you need to put in rather than recycle material. You said when you started you're rotating it four times a day and you've, you've increased that to six or eight. Why, why'd you do that? Well, the, 
when it turns, that aerates it, and the mm -hmm. more it aerates, the less smell it has. Okay. And so it, turning it six times with the amount I'm putting in here now, there's basically no odor at all. So rotating them more often, get a little more aeration, helps with the composting, cut the odor. That's correct. Well, Sam, it looks like you really got something that's working for you. I guess you're going to stick with it. Yes, I am. I, I really like it. Well, thanks for showing us around. Thank you, Doug. Thank you.